that guy. How you doing, bro? What's your name? Kevin. Kevin? Alright, my name is Elijah. Do you see us up on the sign? Alright, what's your name on the sign, bro? No. Uh, yeah, I see it from there. I can't see it. No, he, he said my name. He said Jason. All praise. Judah? Judah, all praise, bro. Alright, so you see that you're from the child of Judah. Um, have you ever, have you ever, have you, was you ever known to this information? This your first time hearing this? Okay, so you know that you're an Israelite. Alright, so what you must be doing as an Israelite? Hey, I'm gonna tell you right this, I didn't mean to cut you off, but it's alright to say you don't know. Cause I one time didn't know. That brother right there, he had to show me, he brought me into the truth years ago. Now we out here teaching our people. So if you don't know about just say you don't know. You ain't gotta make them, you don't know all praise, we're gonna show you. Um, Deuteronomy 10 and 12. Deuteronomy 10 and 10 verse 12. And now, Israel. So now, brother, what's your name again? Kevin, I'm bad with names, all right? So forgive me if I forget your name. Kevin, my name is Elijah. God says what? And now, Israel. God says, now, Israel. Now that you know that you're an Israelite, brother. What does the Lord thy God require of thee? What does God require of thee? Because God requires something of us men. We're not just out here because we like to be out here for the hell of it. Now, God requires something of us. If we find out what that requirement is, that's why we're out here. So God says, what? And now, Israel, what does the Lord thy God require of thee? God is going to show you what he requires of you, brother. But to fear the Lord thy God. You must fear God, meaning fear his command, fear his judgments, the penalty for breaking his commandments. You know? To walk in all his ways. To walk in all his ways. To love him. To love him. You love God? Alright, we're gonna show you what love is, but what else? And to serve the Lord thy God. God requires you to serve him. We're not on this earth to be niggas, man. We're not on this earth to survive our food stamps, rick section aid, and all this foolishness yeah, they yeah, give us. Yeah. God requires us to serve him. We're gonna show you, bro, because you got a purpose. It's I'm glad that you are here because these men, they're afraid to stand up. But you show them heart. You show them heart that you're willing to stand up. And we need right. you. We don't. With all thy heart and with all thy soul to keep the commandments of the Lord and his statutes which I command thee. What does God require of them? To keep the commandments of the Lord and his statutes which I command thee. So God requires you to keep his commandments, all right? First John 5 and 3, we're going to show you what doing these commandments show to the most high. Because we think, people might think we're just out here for nothing. People may just think we just want to be seen or heard. No, it's the reason why we keep these commandments. Read that. First John chapter 5 verse 3. For this is the love of God. This is the what? For this is the love of God. That we keep his commandments. And his commandments are not grievous. So this is how we show love to God, by keeping his commandments. You love God? You love God? Hey, brother, get your name. What's your name? David. David, all praise, all praise. You see yourself on the sun? Which, which, which side you on? Which side you on? Ephraim. Ephraim? All praise is Ephraim, so so-called Puerto Rican. So this is for you too. You got a purpose in this world. You're not just out here to be so-called Spitz or Hispanic. You got a purpose in this world. And God says what? Read that again. For this is the love of God. God requires you to love him. God requires you to keep his commandments. Did you, did you understand that? 
So when we read Deuteronomy 10 and 12, y'all understand that you're supposed to keep God's commandments, right? That is your purpose. Read that again. First John chapter 5, verse 3. For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments. So now y'all got to understand what are God's commandments because we think it's only 10 commandments. That's what we've been taught, right? It's only 10 commandments. You heard that too, right? It's only 10 commandments. But there's more commandments in the Bible. We're going to show you. Give me um, Leviticus 19:27. That's the beard, right? Bring it up. We're going to show you. Both of you brothers are keeping the commandment right now. You may not have known. Why? Because they don't teach us nothing in the Christian church. I grew up in a Christian church coming under my grandmother. All we do is sing, clap, jump around. We don't learn nothing in the Bible. But we're going to show you what the understanding of this Bible says. You got it? Read that. You got it? You got it? Uh, Leviticus 19, 27. Leviticus 25, whatever you got. All right. We're going to show you a commandment because it's your responsibility. Because once you learn these commandments and start keeping them, you're going to be out here. We need you out here to raise up these people. We need you out here to correct our brothers and our sisters because the other nations ain't going to do it. All they're going to do is set up shops and make money off our foolishness. All they're going to do is set up shops and make money off our ignorance. So if y'all want to make a change, take heed to these commandments and come up here and teach our people. And just know, it's not only us over here in Pine Hills and Silver Star. We got brothers in Atlanta. We got brothers in Columbia. We got brothers all over the, all over the country and outside the world. You read that what you got? Leviticus chapter 19 verse 27. This is a commandment that y'all keep it right now that y'all may not have known. And once y'all learn this, continue to keep it because this is how you show you love God. Read that. You shall not round the corners of your head. When it says round the corners of your head, it's talking about make baldness upon your head. Because coming out of Egypt, that's what the Egyptians did. Have you ever seen the movies, right? You see how they shave off their hair and they, and they keep like a goatee? That's what they did in Egypt. They show us in the cartoons and the movies. They shave their head, whole head off. Sometimes they even shave their, their eyebrows off. But God says what? Ye shall not round the corners of your head. We are not Egyptians. So God says don't follow what they do. God says don't round the corners of your head. So don't make baldness upon your head. So keep hair on your head. You can shave it. Yeah, you can trim it. You don't see, you don't see us with wild afros. Yeah, you can cut it down and all that stuff. But don't make baldness upon your head. You don't? Neither shall thy mar the corners of thy beard. Don't mar the corners of your beard. Meaning don't destroy your beard. Like your beard right now. You got it. You see where your natural beard line is? Do not go past that. You can edge it up, make it look neat, but don't make it go from here to a chin strap. Or don't make it go from here to a goatee. Same thing for you, brother. That's all you can grow. Like so, this is all I can grow. So, so you cut this right here? Uh, that right there? No. That's all the part of your beard. You can line it up, but don't cut it off. All right? All right. Just for you too, brother. I know that's all you probably, that's all you can probably grow. That's all I can grow. Bro. Same thing for me, but we got to keep what we got. You know what I mean? You know? Look it up. That's it. Um, give me another law. Um, yes, sir. I'm a rapper and I made a song. Now, right now, bro, we got more important things. Not saying that your music is not important, but we got to make sure we teach our people because we did that a lot. We did that in slavery, we did that out of slavery. We make music. Tupac did that. that was, I was listening to Tupac today, honestly, you know what I mean? Because I love how he had that revolutionary spirit. That's why I got some of my motivation from coming up as a child to be revolutionary. So, music, that, 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 music that's not going to change our people because we have people in the past that tried that. Tupac is my example for one. He tried to be revolutionary through his music. Haven't gotten our people nowhere. We still got baby mothers. We still got um, broken homes and so forth and so on. So music, yeah, that's cool. But we got to focus on these words right here. Get Leviticus 11. Some, some that they can relate to real quick. We're going to show you something that you probably can relate to. These, we'll get to that next probably. But Leviticus 11 and 7 real quick. Leviticus chapter 11 verse 7. And I just want to say, feel proud about yourself that you have the courage to stand out in front of me. Because these men out here, they want to be soft. Um, I love my brothers and all that stuff, but we have gotten weak over the ages. One time we used to fight. You ever heard of the um, American, AIM, uh, American Indian Movement, AIM Association, the Brown Berets, the so-called Puerto Ricans, they stood up and fight. But now our people have gotten lazy. But this is the only way we're going to win against our oppressors. This is the only way we're going to fight against them, by using God's word. Read that. Leviticus chapter 11 verse 7. It's all about keeping God's commandments because as he fought for us in Egypt, as he fought for us against the Assyrians, he's going to fight for us here in America once we start That's keeping right. these commandments. Right. Le Leviticus chapter 11 verse 7. And the swine, though he divided the hook. So brother, you know what the swine is? What is it? Just so you know. A pig. A pig, exactly. Read that, read it again. And the swine, though he divided the hook, so we divide the hook because there's a commandment on certain animals you can eat. God says they must have a divided hook. But God says because this animal has, though he has a divided hook, what about it? And he divided the hook and be cloven footed. He has a cloven foot, read on. Yet he cheweth not the cud. The cud is the grass. He does not chew the grass and regurgitate it, read on. He is unclean to you. He's what? Unclean to you. God says the pig is what? Unclean. Unclean, exactly. I like your spirit. God says the, unclean, the pig is unclean to you. Meaning what? 
of their flesh shall ye not eat. We're not supposed to eat the pig. At one time I grew up in the South. My grandma on Sunday, she used to cook a big dinner. Everybody who don't see each other all week would come on Sundays to meet up with each other. My grandma would serve all type of manner of abominations. The God says what? Of their flesh shall you not eat. And their carcasses shall you not touch. They are unclean to you. Because they're unclean to us. So every Sunday we would come to my grandma's house, we would eat these unclean foods. Me as a child growing up, I didn't notice. Like you didn't notice at one time too. But now since I heard this, I got to apply God's commandments. Why? Because God said if you love him, keep his commandments. God says if you want to rise up for your people, keep his commandments. Because once I learn this, now I'm, and once I apply this, I'm able to come out and teach y'all. One day, if you endure through the truth, one day if you take heed to the truth, you can come up and teach your people. Yes. Because it's not just us up here we need to reach it to. Trust me, we got to camp out in Puerto Rico. We got people over there across seas that we got to reach. And you, being strong in the truth, you stand up for your people, you can go out there and reach them. Like I said, it's not just us on this corner. We got brothers in Puerto Rico, the islands, all the places there. You know what I mean, but we need more men to stand up. Uh, give me um, give me another log. Hey, how you doing, bro? What's, you said your name David, right? Oh, no. <laughs> you said your name David, right? My bad. Hey, what's your name, bro? Say it again? Kevin. Kevin, you got a question? Go ahead. How you got The way we are now? Alright. Let's get Deuteronomy 28. Get 28 and let's get verse 1 first, alright? So actually we're gonna we're gonna show you, alright? We're gonna show you why we in the condition we in, and we're gonna show you where we would have been if we would have did what God told us to do. Alright, I'm gonna show you something. Um before you get that, go to Deuteronomy 11 verse 26. Let me show you that right quick. Because it's a cause and effect to everything, right? Y'all believe that? Cause and effect to everything. So my question is. Why did these things occur to us in our history? Because it didn't just happen to the, the so-called blacks. It happened to the Hispanics as well. Hispanics and Native American Indians. We are one people. We are one nation of people. We went through the same things. So why did these things occur to us? Why? Anybody know? What you think? Order. You said order? What you mean by that? Order is chaos and chaos is order. Order is chaos and chaos is order. All right. So if I was, do y'all be the kids? Y'all kids? No? You have any little older, um, younger siblings? Any little cousins? If I was a three-year-old and I asked you, David, why do these things happen to us? What would you tell me? Because everything has a purpose. Everything has a purpose. All right, I'm going to show you something. Deuteronomy 11, 26. Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 26. Behold, I have set before you this day a blessing and a curse. So this is Moses speaking to the children of Israel in the wilderness. All right? Are you familiar with that history? Because we came out of the land of Egypt, out of hard bondage. And the Most High God, because we hearkened to his words, because we prayed to the Most High God, he delivered us from the, um, the Egyptians. And now we're in the wilderness with Moses. And he's telling us, what again? Read that again. Behold, I have set before you this day a blessing and a curse. So a blessing and a curse. How would you break that down? Is a blessing a good or bad thing? A good thing, right? So what about a curse? What's that? Avoid, right, something you should avoid, right? So that's something bad, right? So he said, I said before you this day, something good or bad. All right, go ahead. Verse 27. Uh -huh. A blessing if you obey the commandments of the Lord your God. So you will get that good thing or that blessing if you did what? Obey the commandments of the Lord your God. If you obey God's commandments. So what would be the flip side? In order to get the curse, the bad thing, what would you have to do then? You right, you have to break his commandments. You're absolutely correct. All right, go ahead. Verse 28, and they curse if you will not obey your God. Right, you're exactly right. So God says we will be cursed if we didn't obey him, right? So now let's get exactly what the curses are. And first, before we get to the curses, let's get, um, let's get some of the blessings because we always touch on the bad things, right? All we know is bad. That's all we have, right? But what about the good things? What would have happened to us if we would have kept God's commandments? Read that. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 1. Uh -huh. And it shall come to pass, uh -huh. if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice 
of the Lord thy God. If we would have listened to God's voice in this Bible, who would have did what he said, all right? Go ahead. To observe uh -huh. and to do all his commandments. It says to do all his commandments. Right. One of God's commandments is not to follow your temple. Because I see you put that cigarette out. That's one of God's commandments. Now, this is what would have happened if we would have did that commandment. All right, read on. Which I command thee this day, uh -huh. that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. He said he was going to do what? Set thee high above all nations on the earth. Right. So, have you ever heard that out of the Bible? The Most High God said in one people above every other nation on the planet? No? Because they tell you John 3, 16, God loves everybody, right? right. So, who is he talking to? Jesus. He said who? Jesus. Who, who's, you saying Jesus is speaking? No. Who? He's talking to Jesus. He's talking to Jesus. All right. So, let's see who he's speaking to. Let's get 27. 27 verse 1. Show you. Deuteronomy chapter 27 verse 1 uh -huh. and Moses actually let's get no go ahead Deuteronomy chapter 27 verse 1 uh -huh. and Moses with the elders of Israel uh -huh. commanded the people saying keep all the commandments which I command you this day all right could you hold that sign up so once again this was Moses with the elders of Israel Deuteronomy 1 and 1 to show you because we're going to show you everything unlike the Christian church we're going to prove everything out of the Bible all right we ain't going to hide nothing so he says he's speaking to Jesus. All right, I'm going to show you who he's actually speaking to. Read that. Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 1. Uh -huh. These be the words which Moses spake unto all Israel. Make Moses spoke to who? All Israel. Who is Israel? The blacks, Hispanics, and Native American Indians today. Yeah. That's who we are. So if he was speaking to us back then, then that would be our forefathers and our foremothers. Yeah. That's who we're speaking to. All right, you understand that? All right, so now let's go back. Deuteronomy chapter 28. He says, if we would have did what God told us to do, what he would have did for us? Set thee on high huh? above all nations. So he said he would have set us on high above all nations. Why would God set us above every other nation? Because the Most High God separated us from every other people. Right. There was never supposed to be no assimilation right. or integration. Right. Like Martin Luther King, he wanted to integrate us with every people. But we not equal to anybody on the earth. That's right. You ever heard that? The Most High God says we his chosen people. He said that we special above everybody. Right. Deuteronomy 7 verse 6. Let's prove that. I'm going to show you. This is what our God would have did for us if we would have kept his commandments. But right now to this day, we don't keep God's commandments. Right. Like the brother was bringing out, every law that the Most High God gave us, our people find to break any type of way. Right. We love sin. That's what breaking God's laws is. We love sin. All right. So now we're going to show you. Once again, what, what did the Most High God say about his chosen people? Yeah. One more verse and I got you, all right? Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 6. Uh -huh. For thou art holy people. It says you are what? Holy people. You are holy or separate people. You're not like everybody else. Right. The Most High God says his people are separate. Right. We can either be above or below every other nation on the planet. Right. We can never be equal to them. Right. And right now we below every other nation because we broke God's commandments. Yeah. All right, go ahead. For thou art a holy people uh -huh. unto the Lord thy God. Uh -huh. So the blacks, Hispanics, and you Native American Indians, you are a holy people to the Lord thy God. Right. All right? You are God's chosen people, the Israelites, right. the true Jews according to the Bible. All right, read on. The Lord thy God has chosen thee uh -huh. to be a special people. Oh, no, he said he chose you. All right, so now. If you choose something, right? Let's say you have a favorite. You got? Do you have a uh, favorite shoe? You ever had a favorite toy or anything like that? You chose that toy out of every other toy that you had, right? So is it equal to all the other toys that you got in your room? No. It's, it would be special, right? You would hold it at a higher esteem or you have a greater love for that specific toy than any other toy that you got in your room, right? So now let's read what he said again. He said he did what for us? The Lord thy God has chosen thee uh -huh. to be a special people uh -huh. unto himself. Unto himself. Meaning the Most High God wanted us to himself, not every other nation. All right, go ahead. Above all people. Above what? Above all people. So that kills John 3.16 right yeah. there. Yeah. It yeah. says above all people. Yeah. Right. John 3.16 is, is not exactly what you think it is. All right, It's not talking about everybody. It's talking about the world of Israel. All right? right. The blacks, Hispanics, and Native American Indians. Go ahead. Yeah. Above all people that are upon the face of the earth. Every nation on the face of the earth. Because believe it or not, every nation on the earth has a name in the Bible. All right? right. And when you look into it, you look into your research, and you actually find out what the Bible is talking about, you will understand that the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, we make up the 12 tribes of Israel. That's right. right. That's who we are. 
So who is everybody else on the earth? Right now we don't go into it because it really don't matter. What matters is you brothers right here before me, all right? You brothers matter. And that's what the Most High God says, so we're going to deal with you, all right? So now, what was your question, bro? I have a question. Yes, sir. I said I put out my cigarette and I went to all my temple. First Corinthians. I never lit it. Oh, okay. I was, was going to lit it, but right. hey, this is not right. First Corinthians chapter 6. All right, I'm going to show you. So what are you going to do when you walk away from here? Man, I ain't gonna front. I'm gonna be stressed because you're gonna be stressed. Yeah. You know why you stress? Oh, you know what? I'm gonna get. I'm gonna. I'm gonna get that. I'm gonna show you why. I'm Hey, I, you know why you stressed? Because we broke God's commandments and he put curses upon us. That's why you stressed out. You ain't the only one, bro. We stressed out up here too. But we know that we got hope with the Most High God. We know that the Most High God is going to avenge us because we doing exactly what he told us to do. This is your hope right here, bro. You only got to worry about none of the things you're going through. If you keep God's commandments, because you know that in the end, the Most High God going to look out for you. You're going to receive the kingdom of heaven if you do exactly what God told you to do. Before you get that, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 12. All right, let's get the patience of the saints. I mean, Revelation, I'm sorry, Revelation 14, 12. I'm going to show you. This is why we stressed out too. But you know why we not worry about it? I'm going to show you why. Read on. Revelation chapter 14, verse 12. Here is the patience of the saints. It says, here is the patience of the saints. Who are the saints? Hold that for me. Because you always, you heard the word saints before, right? Y'all heard that before? Who, who, who's the Bible calling the saints? Because we heard about it in the, um, and when our foremothers and forefathers was in the slave fields, right? They said, oh, when the saints come marching in, but who was the saints? Peter. Said Peter. Um, Thomas. Thomas. Okay, I'm going to help you out. I'm going to help you out. Let's see, let's see what the Bible says the saints are. Read. Psalms chapter 148, verse 14. Uh -huh. He also insulted the horn of his people. Uh -huh. The praise of all his saints. The praise of who? All his saints. All his saints. So what you're going to find out that is that the Bible is actually a dictionary in itself. Yeah. You don't got to go outside the Bible to define what the saints is. It's going to tell you exactly what it is, what it is or who it is. All right, go ahead. Even the children of Israel. Who are the saints? The children of Israel. One more time. Who are the saints is according to the Bible? The children of Israel. All right, so David, who are the saints are? Children of Israel. Children of Israel. Who are the saints are, bro? Children of Israel. All right, so now let's go back. So what is the patience of the saints? Why are we patient? Why are we not worried about dealing with our boss when we go to work? Why are we ain't worried about that? Why are we ain't worried about when the bills come through the door? Why? We ain't stressed out about that. Why not? This is why. All right, because we got patience with the Most High God, and we doing exactly what he told us to do. And he told us that because we doing exactly what we doing, he said it's going to be a reward in the end. Who are the saints again? Who are the, who are the, the saints? Israel. So here's the patience of the Israelites. Once again, everybody you see on these signs, you brothers right here. All right, go ahead. Here are they that keep the commandments of God. Here are they that keep God's commandments. All right, go ahead. And the faith of Jesus. Uh-huh. So it says the faith of Jesus. That's our patience. We got faith in the Most High God. Because when you read the Bible, you'll find out that Christ is actually going to come back to save his people. Y'all ever heard that before? Yeah. You didn't hear that before, right? You think Christ coming back for everybody? Yeah. Yeah, you think so? Not A Luke everybody, chapter 1? Okay. Just Who coming back for? Uh, he coming back for you if you keep God's commandments and if you know who you are according to the Bible. Because when you read about the kingdom of heaven, how many gates you think the, the kingdom of heaven got? We got one gate for everybody. Everybody come in with the, the beautiful angels and the harp, little butt naked babies. Oh, say it again. Say you got two gates. How many gates you think it got? You know what I got? You know what I want? Revelation 21. What do you say? Because they teach us that um, the kingdom of heaven has one gate. Everybody can come in. All nations, right? Everybody, right? So let's see. Let's see who the kingdom of heaven is for. Read that. Revelation chapter 21, verse 12. It had a wall great and high. So the kingdom of heaven has a wall great and high. All right, go ahead. It had 12 gates. How many gates? 12 gates. It says it has 12. Why, why do you think the kingdom of heaven got 12 gates? Let me see if y'all think it. Because there's 12 tribes of Judah. That's right. It said 12 tribes of who? How many? How many? Israel. That's right. You are absolutely correct. 12 tribes of Israel. All right, read that again. From Leviticus chapter 21, verse 12. And had a wall great and high. And had 12 gates. 12 gates. Exactly what you're talking about. Go ahead. And at the gates, 12 angels. It's going to be 12 angels to protect them gates. Because any and everybody ain't getting in them gates. 
only the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel, all right? And it's going to say that. To be more specific, let's go. And names written thereon. So now I got names written on each gate, 12 gates, right? Which are the names of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. So the kingdom of heaven has 12 gates for the 12 tribes of Israel. That's right. So now question is, where is everybody else getting in at? Pick it up. Where are they going in? Is it it's going to be a back door? Or it's going to be a window they can get through? Bring it out. Where, they, where they getting in at? Oh. Is it a front gate? Like, it's another gate? Go add on the extra gate? It said 12 gates. That's each gate got the names of the 12 tribes of Israel on there. Yeah. But those are the 12 tribes of Israel, the men, women, and children that's keeping God's commandments. Yeah. Those are the only ones that's getting up in there, all right? And like I said, once again, that's for y'all. So that's your patience right there. You don't got to worry about everything you're going through because you know that in the end, the Most High God gonna look out for you, but only if you do something for Him. All right, He ain't gonna give you some. He ain't gonna give you a blessing if you ain't doing what He told you to do. All right, so now I'm gonna deal with you because you said that you stressed out, right? Let's get Ecclesiastes seven and seven. Actually, Ecclesiastes four and one. Let's see why you stressed out. Because, like I said once again, you ain't the only one, bro. Everybody up here, we stressed out. We ride along with you. But you know what help us out and what get us through it? We got each other and we call each other up. We see each other every Saturday. We see each other every day out the week. And we helping each other out. Hey, bro, you going through something? You can't pay your bills? I got you. Don't even worry about that, bro. You going through bad times, bro? I got you, bro. We're going to look out for each other. That's why the Most High God says come together, all right, as a people. But if you strain alone by yourself, you're going to deal with it in your own way. But we're going to show you how the Most High God says you're supposed to deal with your situation. Hold on for one second. I'm going to show you why. Read on. Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse 1. So I return. And consider all the oppression that Say, I return and consider what? All the oppressions that are done under the sun. It says he return he he examined all the oppressions that's done under the sun, meaning over the whole earth. Alright, go ahead. And behold, the tears of such were as oppressed. It says the tears of such. That's talking about you right there. Because we got our brothers and sisters, they going through they going through hard times daily. Right. On a daily basis, they always crying, right? Why? Because we get that that notice on the door. You got two days to pay your rent. Or you getting kicked out. You see what I'm saying? You ain't making enough at the job. So you scrapping from check to check trying to make it. So that's why we constantly going through it. We constantly got tears in our eyes. All right, go ahead. And they had no comforter. And they had no what? No comforter. It says they had no comforter. All right, go ahead. And on the side of their oppressors, there was power. It says on the side. Hey, David, you, st you still with me? Yes. It says on the side of their oppressors. Do you know who our oppressors are? The enemy. It says the enemy. You absolutely correct. So how does the Bible describe our oppressors? Because it says on the side of our oppressors, they have all the power. They the ones that's afflicting us. We can't do this on. We not doing this to ourselves. It's other nations that's afflicting us on a daily basis. They have the power over us and we can't do nothing about it, all right? They the ones setting up the educational system. They the one in the churches. They the one setting up the what, seminary schools to teach you what they teach you in the churches. They the one who give you religion. They the one who give you these false holidays. That's where the oppression comes from. It comes from your enemies, all right? So now, before we get go on, we're going to read on about your enemies. Leviticus 26, verse 17. Because you said oppressors, right? The Bible is going to explain exactly who our oppressors are. You ever heard of a man named Philando Castile? Hey, Shalom. Hey, brother. Hey, brother over here. Hey, brother. Yo. Hey, my brother. Right here. Yo, 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 yo. I'm right here. Hey, you got a question? Oh, okay, okay. Hey, let me talk to you. What's your name, bro? I'm Chio, man. What's your name? What what's your name? What's your name? Oh, I can't reach you right now. I can't reach you right now. But what's your name, bro? I'm Chio. Yo, damn, Chio. All right, Chio. Nice to meet you. I'm going to tell you, all right? That's that's brother David right there. What's your name again? Kevin. This is brother Kevin, right? So what we're doing is showing the brother why exactly we're going through oppression. Because the brother said he's stressed out. You be stressed out sometimes? I'm married every day. Stressed out. Hey you, hey, you ain't the only one. So now I'm showing him why. Why are we constantly being stressed out, all right? So hold on for me. If you got any questions, let me know, all right? Um, what you say your name again? Chill. Chill, all right? Let me know, chill. Leviticus chapter 26, verse 17. So remember, what we're trying to find out is who our oppressors are, all right? The Bible is going to explain. Read on. And I will set my face against you, and ye shall be slain before your enemy. Because you said our oppressors are our enemies, correct? It says you're going to be slain by your enemies, all right? Go ahead. They that hate you 
shall reign over you. It says, they that hate you shall reign over you. So it's a certain people that's reigning or that's over, got power over the nation of Israel, and that's killing them. Right. Who do you think that is? Zechariah chapter 11, verse 5. Who do you think that's talking about? When you look on the news, I know you look back in history, who, who constantly killing our people? You can look on the signs right here in front of you. I know who is it? Who, anybody tell me. Uh, I, Say it again. I, what, the white man. There you go. Exactly. That's who the Bible says your enemies are. Your oppressors. Right. But not only them, every other nation on the planet. Yes, every other nation against you. Why? Because they know who you are. They know something that you don't know. All right. So now let's get that. Zechariah 11 verse 5. Remember, it says you're going to be slain by your enemies. Right? Remember that, right? Go ahead. Zechariah chapter 11 verse 5. Whose possessors slay them. It says whose possessors slay them. Possessors, enemies, going all the way back, all the way back into oppressors. Right. Talking about the same people, all right? It says they, the people that possess us in this land, because when we came over here, did we come by free will? Did we come on a cruise ship? How we came over here? By force. Right, by force, right? So they possessed us. Right. It says whose possessors, they do what? Till in 2018, they still doing what? Whose possessors slay them. They slay us. Philando Castile. You got Eric Garner. Right. You got, um, what's the sister name? Sandra Bland. Yeah, we got Sandra Bland. You got who else? Tamir Trayvon Martin. Martin. Right, Tamir Rice, who, whose possessors slay them. The right. Bible is telling you exactly who they are, yeah. right? But what happens after they slay us? Is there any justice on our part? No, they go to the house. You said they go to, they go to the crib, right? right. They get paid administrative leave. They go, they go on a vacation for killing Negroes. Right. You're absolutely correct. But let's see what the Bible says. And hold themselves not guilty. They do what? Hold themselves not guilty. How many people or how many blacks and Hispanics and Native Americans have been killed by cops? Because believe it or not, when you do your research, it's actually a high count of Native American Indians and Hispanics that get co killed by cops as well. They just don't put that on the news. But if you do your research, they get killed at a high rate too. But he says they get killed, they kill us, and they hold themselves not guilty. Is that not true? True. The Bible is a true book. The That's Bible is the right. only true book in the world. All right? right? Telling you right now. So now, read that again. Zechariah chapter 11, verse 5. Right, you're absolutely right. It was written before it happened. But why, once again, why did all these things happening to us, David? Because you said it earlier. But what before that? Because the most high sent the enemy against us. Why though? To make us stronger. Said to make us stronger. Because we broke God's commandments. Hey, 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 chill, 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 chill. Come on, bro. Come around the corner. Come around in the front, chill. You got you got a question? What's your question, chill? Okay, okay, okay. Alright, hey, get you a flyer. You got you a flyer? Alright, alright. Take it home with you. Do your research, alright? Hit us up. We're looking forward to seeing you, chill. Yes, sir. All right, take it easy. Oh, no, nah, no, nah, you fine, chill. You fine. Hey, so what you got to do? Let's see. Acts chapter 3, verse 19. I'm going to show you, bro. You got a flyer, right? All right, all praise to the most high. So, do you have a means of transportation? Hey, okay. So now, have you ever heard of a popka? Because I don't have a vehicle as well. Got some brothers who don't have one as well. But we still find a way to congregate. That's the commandment of the Most High God. That's how you get involved. You come around other brothers that's like-minded, and you start doing exactly what they're doing, exactly what the Most High God requires of us. All right, and that's keeping his commandments. Hey, all praises. I would just walk by. Uh huh. Oh, those are just black cars. Right, 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 right. But today, today is your day, bro. It wasn't your time. All praises to the Most High. Hey, get that brother a hand. All praises. All praises, brother Dave. That's what the Most High God is looking for. He's looking for your obedience, all right? All praises to the Most High. So now, what's the next step? Acts chapter 3, verse 19. Acts chapter 3, verse 19. Yeah. Repent ye therefore. What's to do what? Repent ye therefore. You know what that means? You know what it means to repent? What that mean? That means you first have to forgive yourself and plead to God. They all your, your old testimony. Yeah, tell them everything. Mm -hmm. all right, okay. To him to say yes or no. Okay, right. You're absolutely correct. But when you repent, it's an action involved, all right? right? You're supposed to stop doing exactly what you've been doing, the things that you used to do in the past. That's breaking God's commandments. You know how you can repent right now? Because are you ready to repent now? You ready to make change now? 
you get rid of that cigarette that you got in your bucket. All right? That's how you start repentance. All right? All praise to the most high. That's a form of repentance. All right? Once again, that's how the most that's who the most high God is looking. He's looking for brothers and sisters that's truly ready to repent and come back to keeping God's commandments. All praise to the most high. So read that again. Acts chapter 3 verse 19. Repent ye therefore and be converted. He says you're supposed to repent, stop doing the things that you used to do, and start keeping God's commandments. That's how you be converted. Psalms 19 verse 7. Hold up. Before we get that, I'm sorry. What will happen if you do? Because right now, you've been, you had a whole life of sin. All right? And the Most High God doesn't forget every anything that you've done. He says the things that you did, the good and the bad, the Most High God is going to hold you accountable of. So now, if you repent and you keep God's commandments from here on out, what is God going to do with the bad things that you've done in your past? Read on. Repent, ye therefore, and be converted, uh -huh. that your sins may be blotted out. What he going to do to your sins? The bad things you used to do? Ahead. That your sins may be blotted out. He says he going to blot it out. Matthew 12, verse 31. He going to forgive you for everything that you've done. And you're going to start off with a new slate. But it's up to you. Um, after you do that, what you going to do afterwards? Because the Most High God is looking for you to continue to keep his commandments after that, moving forward. All right? Hold on one more second. Hold on. I'm going to show you why it's important. All right? Read on. Matthew chapter 12, verse 31. Uh -huh. Wherefore I say unto you, uh -huh. all manner of sin. It says all manner of sin, meaning anything you've done, bro. Right. You slept with woman or woman without being married, most I say he'll forgive you for it. Right. You smoking weed, most I going to forgive you for it. Right. You had hatred towards your brother, most I going to forgive you for it. Right. All right? Why? Because you did it in ignorance. You didn't know better. Same thing for us. I got tattoos. Some of the brothers around here probably had tattoos. Went to the club. Smoke before. How many of y'all brothers used to smoke? Anybody? See how many brothers used to smoke just like you. But what happened with the difference is these brothers repented of their sins and came back to the Most High God. Yes, so you got to do the same thing, bro. All right? So it, it's not impossible. Other brothers have done it too. All right? Go ahead. Wherefore I say unto you, all manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men. So all manner of sin may be forgiven. All right? So now, what, what's your question? What's your question? Uh, you already answered my question. Bro. Yes, sir. But what happened is, uh, I ain't trying to justify this. But me, I'm a very, very angry person. Got gotcha. you. I can't buy a car. I'm not the same. I got a tank in my head. Mm -hmm. And I constantly get migraines. So I smoke weed. Right. Okay. And so I, now. I pray to God and I, I ask Him to help me and everything like that. But it's just, Sirach, chatted, um, 30. It keeps on going and going. Right. And okay. It feels like something's dripping in my head sometimes. I don't know if it's good or not, but when I smoke weed, I just be able to go to sleep. It's, it, it, it makes you calm, right? So it puts you at ease. All right, because we got a lot of brothers and sisters that go through the same thing, all right? Not exactly to the extent that you're talking about. I don't know personally, but a lot of our people find a remedy for it by smoking weed, um, by drinking their life away. Um, a lot of people, we actually find comfort in sin, doing our own pleasures. But let's see what the Most High God says about that. I want 30... Uh, mine over to heaviness. Where's that? It's 38. That's 38? Yeah. That what I'm looking for? It's 38. It's like something. Actually, no, no, no. Go to um, Sirach 41. Sirach 41. Alright, I'm going to show you something. Because remember what I said earlier. The reason why we're going through what we're going through is because we broke God's commandments in the first place. Alright? Right. So now I'm going to show you. So read that. Sirach 48. 48? I mean 41. I'm sorry. 41 verse 1. Sirach chapter 41, verse 1. Uh -huh. Oh, death, how bitter is the... Re Sirach chapter 40, verse 1. Uh -huh. Great travail is created for every man. You know what travail is? Travail is talking about tribulation problems. Problems that you have in your life, all right? So it says great travail, meaning a lot. A lot of problems we go through day to day. All right, go ahead. And... Sirach so chapter 40 verse 1, uh -huh. great travail is created for every man. It says great travail, we have a lot of problems. It says it's created for every man. So you ain't the only one, all right, go ahead. And, and heavy yoke is upon the sons of Adam uh -huh. go ahead. from the day that they go out of their mother's womb. So from the day that we came out of our mother's womb, we constantly go through problem after problem. All right, go ahead. To the day that they return to the mother of all things. So it says, until we go back into the earth, which is where we came from, until we die, 
He says we're going to constantly go through problems, bro. All right, go ahead. Verse 2. Uh -huh. Their imagination of things to come and the day of death. Uh -huh. Trouble their thoughts and cause fear of heart. Uh -huh. So we constantly stressed out because we worried about what's going to happen tomorrow. We're going to be worried about what, what happened yesterday. Like I said, once again, what's, what's happening on the job? I got to worry about the boss firing me because I already know that it's hard to find a job as a black and Hispanic man. If I do get fired, I got to go out and I got to put in applications and I got to go to another nation that already don't even want to hire me. And I got a family to provide for. You see what I'm saying? These are the certain things that we stress out about on a daily basis. I don't know your specific problems, but we all go through the same things, bro. Why? Because the Most High God says it was going to happen to the nation of Israel, but once again, breaking his commandments, right? So now the whole problem, let's get on um, Revelation chapter 21. Yeah. That's what I want? Yeah, Sirach 30, 21. That's what I'm looking for. All right, so now what's the remedy for it, all right? Because once again, it says, great travail, meaning problems, stress is made for every man. We all go through it, right? But what are we not supposed to do? Is that what I'm looking for? Sirach chapter 30, verse 21. Uh -huh. Give not thy mind to heaviness. It says, give not thy mind to heaviness. You know what heaviness is? Yeah. What's that talking about? Uh, it's, it's a burden. Right. Heaviness is talking about depression or stress. The Most High says, don't give your mind to that. All right, go ahead. And affect not thyself and thy own counsel. It says you're not supposed to take your own counsel, meaning when you're going through certain things, right? Because exactly, you just explained a lot of everything you go through. And you says when you go through those things, you, you find comfort in smoking cigarettes. The Most High says, don't smoking weed. Okay. So you find comfort in smoking weed. Read that last part again. And afflict not thyself in thy own counsel. It says don't find comfort in your own counsel. Meaning you're not supposed to find out comfort in your own way. You're not supposed to come up with it in your own mind. Because what we do is we go off. When we stress out, like I said before, we go towards smoking weed. We drink our lives away. But the Most High God says you find comfort in these scriptures. That's how you find comfort. And once again, you find comfort in being around other brothers and sisters that's going to help you in your situation. That's why you got to come amongst other brothers and sisters that are like-minded. That's going to help you out when you go through those certain situations, all right? Shalom. This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us. Subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcasts, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.